Alright, good morning, Mount Rivers Church. Good morning. Ah, that was weak. That was bad again. Good morning, Mount Rivers Church. Alright, I'm glad you guys are here this morning. Um, today is a gift from God. Right. And the fact that you're here means that you have carved out time because you believe that time in God's house with God's people is highly important. And I want to commend you because you're right on the money. And God has brought you to this place this morning to bring life change, not only to you, but to your family. And so we've got a great message in store. I'm really, I'm really pumped up about today's message. Hey, but before we get into that, we just want to say, if this is your first time, first time at Mount Rivers Church, welcome home. You're only a first time guest here one time. That's right. And you're just part of our family, as crazy as it might be. <laughs> hey, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have what we call the Newcomer's Life Group, and we would love for you to come and be a part. Yes. If you'll come yes. between 6.30 yes. and 7, yes. Brad and I will make ourselves available to just visit with you. We want to get to know who you are. If you attend this church... We see your beautiful faces in our crowd, but we don't always get to know who you are unless you come on Wednesday night and meet us and let us chat with you. So come on Wednesday night, 6.30. You won't regret it. Hey, this morning, we're going to pray before we get going into the Word. Will you just stand with me in honor of God? We're going to pray over this yes, message we're going to bring to you today called Seasons. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence, God, that fills this house. God, I thank you that you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst of us. God, we know today that you have a word for your people. God, for each and every one of us, God, on seasons. God, I pray that you would help us today to open our hearts and open our minds to receive the word of God that will be implanted and bring change that will challenge us today. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen, amen. How many of you guys love fall? Let me see your hands. Yes! Got some fall people in the house this morning. I love fall. This morning, um, you know, and I have a confession, all right? So I am, like by nature, I am not a morning person. I don't like getting up. I don't wake up, like, on my own, naturally. If you left me alone, I'd probably sleep till noon. I love to sleep because they say that um, that children oh, um, that, yes psychologists say that children need as much sleep as possible for brain development. You heard that? It's true. And Misty says I've never grown up. So I think <laughs> that God is just trying to grow me, and, and He just wants more brain development because maybe I'm undeveloped. Maybe so. maybe so. So I don't know, but I love to sleep. Uh, but what's crazy about that is that there have been uh, careers occupations I have been involved in that forced me to be uh, at work at the um, crack of dark. And, uh, and, but I like it. Like, it's weird. I don't like getting up naturally, but I, once I'm up and I get to experience the cool of the morning and the sunrise, seeing it all, just, it's beautiful. And I love it and I enjoy it. And in those moments, I'm glad I'm awake. I'm glad I'm up. This morning in particular was one of those mornings. Uh, we came outside and man, it was gorgeous. And it was like, I don't know, 60 something degrees. It was cool. And it was brisk and it was fresh. And I could feel the oxygen touching my lungs when I breathed in. And I look across the valley out beside our house and, and the, the fog is just crawling across the grass and the sun is coming up over the hill and the, the just the shades of pink and orange just subtly touching the fog. Beautiful! Beautiful! And all I hear in the background is, it is so stinking cold out here. I can't believe how cold it is. Why didn't you start the car? Why didn't you warm up the car? Turn on that heated seat hood up my, put the heat up my tushy. Just a little bit. And right complaining and energy draining. No. She sucks the energy out of me. Dry. Dry. How do y'all know he's lying right now? I am. The only thing I said is I stepped outside and said, ooh, it's cold. That's what I just said. <laughs> is that not what I just said? I You're just a good story I'm a storyteller. storyteller. Okay, so I put expression into it. I may have had a few things from here and there, but you gotta make stories good. My dad taught me that. So, uh, I love fall. It's brisk. Now, now, I like spring and fall because it's cool outside, right? If my house is not like 69 to 71 or 2 degrees, I can't sleep at night. 
Like, I have to be chilly. How many of you guys are like that? You have to be kind of cold to sleep. I've got to be. That's awesome. So, so, seriously. But if it's hot, like, oh my word. I cannot, like, I don't know. Like, whoever thought of camping in the summertime is stupid. Why? Why would you camp outside when the humidity is 100%? And it's like 98 degrees or 110. Why would you do that? Have you heard of glamping? Has anybody heard of that? Glamping? Has anybody heard of that? It's new. I'm telling you. I don't know what it is, but I think it's cool. Somebody said it, Somebody said it was cool, so I don't know. But I think air conditioning is involved with glamping. Is that right? Is air conditioning involved? Yes, sir. Yes? yes. It is? That's my kind of camping. That's what I'm talking. I mean, I'm a man. Okay, hold on. I just have to jump in here. And I can rub it, but I want to do it in air conditioning. Okay, I have to tell a little story. So our son, our second son, just turned 13 last Sunday. And one of our traditions at our home is that um, when they turn 13... It's a two-year tradition. It's a two-year tradition. We only have two boys, we're not going to have any more. But this was the tradition, is that Brad would take them camping, and he would help them to kind of have a passage into manhood and understand the responsibility that comes with now being a teenager, and now you are a man, and you're going to be a man of God. Right. It's really awesome. Good. So he thought the coolest manly thing he could do was take them camping, right? <laughs> we go on a tent, and we don't have... Somebody you have said, one somebody bag. said, you want to borrow my tent? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was all the back. I was like, yes. And, and oh, we said, like we we've up. got the whole thing. We've got the tent. It comes with sleeping bags. It comes with everything you need. Brad was like, no. yeah, no. no. We're sleeping in the van. Yeah. All the seats down. The, the air running all night long <laughs> with a movie playing I in even, the I car. Even, I, no joke. I promise this you. This is the truth. I actually Googled. If, if you're if you remain in the vehicle all night, what do you die? <laughs> because I know that carbon monoxide poisoning, like if the garage door is down and you're fully enclosed, like you'll die. But if you're outside and the exhaust is escaping, I thought they must still gonna die. I don't know. So I cracked the windows just in case. I cracked it, but I ran the air. All oh. and we watched Come to oh. Panda 3 and we roasted hot dogs over an open fire and it was awesome. Oh. Tyler said it was an awesome time. And then we got but and we shot we broken. shot clay pigeons over the river. And it was cool. That is cool. But thank God it was like 60 something degrees that night. Yeah, you got really fortunate. So that has nothing to do with today's message. How many of you guys <laughs> like um, your 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 spring and fall people? Raise your hand. Yes? Okay, how many summer people do we have? Summer. Right here. How many are sad? Trump, it's moving on. Sad? It's moving on. Really? I am. No, are you? Like, eight up in the head. <laughs> Summer is not good. Great. It's hot and it's miserable. Great, and your skin is darker than the winter. Fine, son. I'm white. <laughs> Sorry. But some people resist the change of seasons. But guess what? It's inevitable. That's right. You know what? Change is inevitable. But here's the deal. We're all going to face changing seasons. Do we honestly mourn when one season comes and the next season goes? To be honest, most of the time, we start embracing it and we just realize, hey, it's just a part of life. Unless you like, live in Florida or something, I hear like it's one all year long. But changes in seasons are all a part of life. And the Word of God has so much to say about seasons. So today, we're going to we're gonna take you through a few things that are going to help you as you change seasons in your life. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. It's in the middle of your Bible. If you don't have your Bible with you, I bet you have a smartphone. And if you do, you should download the U version. That's the U version, Y-O-U version, Bible app. You can look it up there. All right, we're going to read from Ecclesiastes 3, starting in verse 1. It says this. For everything there is a season. Can you say season? Season. For and there's a time for every activity under heaven. Now he's going to give us some of these activities. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest what you planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to quit or oh, oh, to be quiet. I don't 
don't like that. See, I can't even read it right now. I don't like it. A time to be quiet. Maybe she's sleeping. It's time longer. to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I should. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Everything has a season. Everything. I want you to think about it. When you were little and you were born into this world, there came a day where you one day were so excited because it was time for you to go to school. And you got to go and you changed seasons and you went to school. And for like the next 12 years of your life, oh, some of you that's a long way back, I mean, think really hard, okay? Think way hard. It's a long time ago for me. You think about, you feel like you're never going to get out of that season. I mean, you're going to go to school forever, right? And then all of a sudden that senior year hits. And you are counting down the day. And you cannot wait to graduation day. I mean, you're living everything that year for one day. The day you get on that happy piano, you go down whatever that aisle or across that stage, and you get that diploma, signifying what? That you finished. That you completed that season. And then on to the next season. You know, the day after I graduated, I think I cried. Because it was like, now what? I mean, life is so much different now. I mean, like, immediately. I had lived for that moment. We threw a huge party. Everybody left. And the next day I got up, I'm like, that's over. Now what? Well, I had a plan. I mean, college was next. And I remember going into college that first day, walking in, terrified, out of my mind. Because why? It was a new season. My friends from high school weren't there. My mom wasn't there. My family didn't go with me. I lost my keys in my car! Not cool on your first day of college! You embarrass yourself. You know, first day. Yes. Ooh. Horrible. Ooh. For a person who lives to not be embarrassed, I was horrified. I didn't even have a cell phone. You're like, call your mom. No. No. I was 18 and had no cell phone. For all you whiny little 8th graders who don't have one yet, <laughs> suck it up, right? <laughs> Listen to me, there's changes of seasons and with it comes what? Excitement, but fear. College came, and college went. Then marriage comes. And it's so exciting to be planning a wedding in six to eight weeks and yes, you're going to get married. That was us. And then, your first kid comes. And you're so excited. Another big change. All of your life is honestly built up of nothing but changing seasons. But let me tell you what. You can either learn how to embrace the changing seasons or you can live in fear of the unknown of what's to come and miss out on something really incredible that God wants to do in your life. You see, once I got going in college, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I stayed for six years. And even then, if I could have afforded it right then, I would have kept going because I loved it. And then I got married. And yeah, that was, oh, that was rough. Right in the beginning? Was it rough? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're on the spot. Was it rough? You're a liar. Go ahead. It was rough. Yeah, it was, was rough. rough. Until you got to the marriage part and you look at me and I, it's like I ruined it. It was rough. Why? Because guess what? There was change. Somebody else's toothbrush was in my bathroom. Somebody else's laundry was on my floor next to my bed and I was supposed to pick it up and do it. Like I had to get I had to I had to rethink how I did life. Okay, well, we never officially like filled out any job description. Seriously, if you're going to get married, this is just a different message for a different day. But if you're going to get And what you expect of the other one? Because I just expected a normal adult <laughs> would put their laundry in a hamper. Fifteen years right? in. Right? Fifteen years in, the laundry's still on the floor. It's all right. I learned how to pick it up. I just bent over. He's like, it all works right. your legs, babe. Me, Do it every day, right? Me, dream, misty, do. Yeah. That's a whole other story. Solomon, King Solomon, known as the richest man that probably ever walked 
the face of the earth. I believe he was probably richer than anybody that will ever yes. walk the face of the earth. Go to 1 Kings chapter 2. He faced a really tough changing season in his life. He was really comfortable as the king's son. He was the prince. His daddy, David, was the king. He had a really comfortable life when all of a sudden King David says, Son, come on in. We've got to have a chat. We're going to start in verse 1, chapter 2, and it says this. As the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son Solomon. I'm going where everyone on earth must someday go. Take courage. I want you to say that. Take courage. Take courage. You're going to learn from this passage right here. Take courage in your changing season. And be a man or be a woman. Observe the requirements of your Lord your God and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, the commands, the regulations, and the law written in the law of Moses. So you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. Listen to me. God's word is so incredible. Your life is going to be nothing but a bunch of seasons. It's like flipping the page in a book, right? You watch a movie and it changes scenes. That's going to happen over and over and over and over in your life. And what you've got to understand is with every season, three things happen. With a change in season, there comes change, challenges, and an opportunity for growth. If you're taking notes, I would write it down. There's going to be change, challenges, and an opportunity for growth. Solomon was facing a changing season in his life. He could either embrace it, or he could run in fear and hide. You see, David was an incredible man of God. He was a man after God's own heart. The people loved him. You know that Solomon in his mind is thinking, I have really big shoes to fill. I don't know if I can do this or not. Have you ever faced something that you went in, maybe you got a new job, and you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this. I mean, God's opened the store, I'm going to walk through it. I don't know if I can do it. You know, you get in there, and you can either run in fear and never accomplish anything, or you can say, God, I'm going to put you first in my life. I'm going to follow your word, which is all your decrees. God, I'm going to take courage, and I'm going to step out in faith. And I'm going to embrace the new season in my life. So, why do we resist change? Because it's scary. I mean, that's that's really what we have, what we have to ask ourselves. Because the, if, if the season is inevitable, here's what happens a lot of times. We, if you, Especially if you love the season you're in, right? I mean, you, you love where you're at. You love, you love where God has you. You love maybe your title or your position at work. Or maybe you love where you live, yeah. right? Uh, whatever it is, if you are like loving your season, it's going to be especially hard to transition out of that because we all get comfortable and we don't like change. And the fact is, is when we've done something for so long, we get tied to a, a title, right? Um, and we kind of I don't know, we, we kind of confuse our, uh, our, our, our duties with our identity. You know what I'm saying? Our duties with our identity. When we get to doing something for so long, we begin to own that season. We begin to think to ourselves, well, I belong in this season, and, and, I, and, and this is who I am, right? And, and we really struggle with, with moving out of that, but the, the fact is, is that we have a purpose problem, okay? This is really good. When you understand your purpose, you understand that the change of seasons don't matter at all. When you understand your purpose and why. And so what is our purpose? It's to know God and to make Him known. Are you following me? Your purpose on this planet, I'm sorry, it's not to work the job you're working in. It's not to make money. It's not to raise your kids and breathe air and die. Your purpose is to know God and to make Him known. God wants to be glorified through you. He's given you abilities. He's given you so many resources so that He can be glorified through your life. It's called ministry. And each and every one of us are called to it. Can I just jump in here for a You can jump in here. I just want to throw something out here. I want you to think about most people, we work our whole life for things, sure. right? Yes, it's your responsibility to provide for your family. I want you to wear clothes. You should have food. You should have a roof over your head, right? You work so hard for these things that you get caught up in 
your identity becomes what you have and who you are, right. what title your job has given you, I'm this or I'm that, right? What of that are you taking with you when you go? If you're a believer, there is going to be an appointed time for each of us to die. There's going to be a day that it, it is our day to go. Or the rapture is going to happen. We are not going to take all those things and that identity with us. What we're going to take is our relationship with God, what we have, what we have grown in with Him, and who we have told about Jesus. That's what really matters. So when it comes down to it, if I work at McDonald's, or I work at a big corporation, or I'm a pastor of a church, or I'm a uh, whatever in life that you want to be, ultimately, your purpose is, my first job is to know God with all of my heart. Serve Him, give Him everything I am. And no matter what I'm doing, figure out a way to share Jesus with other people. Because that's what's really going to matter at the end of your life. That's right. That's right. And sometimes we resist change. And we are creatures of habit, right? Right? Maybe you guys sat in the same seat last week. <laughs> We're creatures of habit. We like, hey, I have a routine. Right? I get up, I drink a full bottle of water, I start the coffee, I start my Bible study, right? I put out a post to encourage people on Facebook. I mean, I've got a routine. And I like that routine. And I don't like anything to mess up my routine. I think it's OCD. It might be. I'm not sure. But at least I'm going to be OCD for G.O.D. For his glory. And <laughs> uh, my dad is like that. Man, the dude, like, he gets in a routine and you do not mess up his routine because we like structure, right? But I'm saying we resist change because we don't understand our purpose and we can't really see what's ahead. And just, to, just some advice to you leaders out there, if you're a leader in the workforce or in any realm of organization whatsoever, if you want to usher change in your organization, you have to cast vision right. to your people because you have to help them to see what they can't see. Right. In order to cause people to let go of where they're at and that we're all naturally prone to holding on to where we're at, you got to show them where they can be and take them somewhere mentally first and say, hey, this is where we're headed. And God does that with us. Sometimes He shows us and gives us a picture of where He wants to take us in our life, but sometimes He doesn't. And the advice to you for both scenarios is the same. Run into it with confidence. Run into it with faith. And, and stop thinking that you have to be in control. Right. You do not need to be in control. Right? The last time I made a suggestion to God, Lord, you really ought to do this, He said, oh, really? Oh, really? You really think that that's the thing to do? Well, guess what? I'm God. <laughs> and I don't really need your advice. Right? I don't need your suggestions. I'm God. I kind of you know, create the whole world and put everything in orbit and create oxygen and food and shut up! I know what I'm doing! Right? That's how God talks to me. That's how, that's how we communicate. Like, shut up. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I talk too much. Be still and know that I am God. You want to be in control. No, you don't. Right. You do not want to be in control. You want to know why? Because you don't know your future. Right. You don't know what God has in store for you. Right. You might love the season you're in, but you don't want to remain the same. Right? Right? You don't want to stay where you're at. You want to grow in God. You want to go. Listen to me. You might see a season ahead and it looks, it looks horrific. It looks awful. Right? But guess what? As long as you go with God, it doesn't matter. Right. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake. It's like a lot of us are saying, the worst thing that could ever happen to me and my greatest fear is that I will die. Really? Well, when I die, I'm going to heaven. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that is like the most incredible thing that could ever happen to me is that I could leave this world and be in heaven walking on streets of gold. Like flying out with angels and hanging out with my loved ones that have gone before me and worshiping at his throne, hanging out in the mansion that he created for me. Right? Eternity without pain? Sign me up! Right now! Sign me up! Sign me up! I don't want to be in control. And I don't know what's ahead. But guess what? That's called faith. 
And faith is this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is God casting vision in your life. He's saying, look, I know you don't see what I see. I trust you. Just, just trust me where I'm about to take you. I know that you love the season you're in, but let go and let God be God, right? And let's move into this new season because I want to do something great in your life. I want to be glorified through you. So let me take you somewhere and let's get to work doing something, right? How many of you guys have ever been on a flight before? Flown on a plane. Okay, so the fact is, you're trusting that that pilot is going to land you safely, right? Right? And, um, you know, the fact is, you rely somewhat on his skills and his abilities, but there's something else. There's, there's a part of the scenario that is really important when it comes to landing a plane. And that is that the pilot needs to communicate with the air traffic controller. The air traffic controller needs to tell the pilot that you are clear for a landing. Right? The air traffic controller can see what is on the ground. The pilot cannot. Okay. Every time a pilot lands at any airport, he is landing in faith. Right. Because he has no clue what he's about to land into. He has got to fully rely on the air traffic controller. And you and I need to fully rely on our air traffic controller, God, because He can see what we cannot see. He wants us to land in that next season, but you've got to trust Him. You've got to trust Him. Change is good. The timing and the changing of seasons is good. But here's one more thing I want to leave you with, okay? Don't quit the season you're in. Because it gets tough. I have so many people wishy-washy, right? Um, shallow thinking believers that just in the name of God say, you know, I just really pray to God and feel like I need to quit this or I need to get up and move or I need to change churches. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Because they don't like this or they don't like that or because they're uncomfortable. You know what? Bloom where you're planted until God changes your season. Don't, because here, guys, listen to me. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to keep cycling and cycling and cycling because your whole life is nothing but a test. And if you don't pass the test of character and courage, faith, everything that God is wanting to do in and through your life, He's going to make you go through that jump over and over and over and over and over and over until you get it. Don't give up. Don't, don't give up. Unless God says it's time to give up, don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing, right? Be obedient, and you will be blessed. When God tells you to do something, stick with it. Stay in that season until God changes your season. I had a really good friend of mine. She came up to me and she said, I have just, at work, she was so stressed out. She said, I have had it. She said, the environment that I'm in is horribly toxic. The people are horrible to me. It's unhealthy. There's so much drama. There's so much pressure put on me. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. Am I talking to somebody today? Yes? Well, you know Because I know I am. So, um, it gets, there's so much pressure on me. You know, and she said, I just, I'm just, every, I hate going to work. She said, every single day I go to work, I do not look forward to it. And she said, I, I think I'm going to put on my resignation. I said, I said, did God tell you to do that? And she said, I said, have you prayed about that? And she said, oh. and you know, when there's silence for just a second, you're like, okay, so obviously you didn't pray about it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to take matters in your own hands and you're trying to play God and you think you know what's best, right? Don't do that. Stay where you're at. Bloom where you're planted until God says, okay, you're done. And you know what happened to her two weeks later? Guess what happened? God changed the season. Her employment situation totally changed and she had no choice but to go somewhere else because it was God's time. And I said, don't you feel so much better that you just stuck it out and you stayed in there and you were obedient? She said, I feel a lot better knowing that I 
you know, I fulfilled the assignment. Because here's the reality, guys. Listen to me, please. Every season that you're in is an assignment by God. You have to understand your purpose, and your life is not your own. You were bought with a price, with the blood of Jesus Christ, and your life does not belong to you. We're talking about purpose here, right? Jesus died on the cross, so you can have life and have it more abundantly, but your life now belongs to Him for His service and for His purpose. The Bible says that we're bond servants. Right? And you're like, I don't, I don't want to be a slave. I don't want to be a bond servant. I don't want to be restricted. There's, there's no greater liberty and freedom and joy in being a slave than being a slave for Jesus Christ. He is our master. He is our provider. He is our protector. Right? So when the bills come, you're like, how am I going to pay this bill? Well, guess what? He owns all the cattle amongst a thousand hills. Right? He will supply your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Your life is not your own. We're talking about purpose here, right? We're talking about seasons. The seasons are assignments. So you don't give up until your assignment is finished and He says, well done. Well done, good and faithful. Good and faithful, sir. Right. You know, it's interesting. Seasons will either make you or break you. I want you to remember that. When you go through a new season, a new transition in your life, you can either embrace it and you can say, God, I'm ready. Maybe it wasn't something that you expected. Maybe it was something brought on by you because at the same time, the Bible says we reap what we sow. So sometimes seasons happen as a consequence to our own choices and habits and decisions. But at the same time, we have to say, God, I'm ready and I'm going to embrace this new season. I'm going to have the right perspective. And you know, seasons don't just happen in people's lives. They happen for organizations. They happen for churches. They happen for schools. And I want to tell you that this church has watched season after season after season come through. We started in a mobile home. Thank God that season ended and we moved into a building. We moved from a little building into a bigger building, right? We added on. We built leaders. There were tons and tons and tons and tons of seasons. You can hear all about those seasons on Wednesday night in the newcomer slide group. <laughs> but let me tell you, I was going to plug. This church is going through another season. We're getting ready to build a brand new facility because this building is getting full. If you've been here at first service, you would not be sitting down right now. There are people standing all along the back walls because first service is packed. So thank you for coming thank at you 11. Thank you for coming to the second service. Thank you for coming at 11. There's not enough room in the first one anymore. We're in a good season. But let me tell you, in the last few weeks, we had Captain Kim come to us and say, God is birthing a new season in my life. Some of you are like, who's Captain Kim? Captain Kim is our kids pastor. She's been with us for five years. She's done an amazing job. If, you, if some of you guys were thrown into kids ministry, you might be like, Woo! Like, they could tie you up. They could duct tape they could you to the wall. Sorts of things to you. I asked them one day, they had duct tape, but I totally expected Kim to be duct taped to the wall because that would just That'd be awesome. awesome. That would just be awesome. That would definitely listen, be God's will. You know, she came and she <laughs> said, I feel like there's a change of season. She said, I feel like God is telling me that, that it's time for me to step aside from this season of my life. And you know what we said? That's awesome. Do you know why? Because you can hear from God. You can hear from God. So does that mean as pastors that we're all freaked out and we're like, scared? Oh no! What are we going to do? No. No. Why? God's in control. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. Now that doesn't mean you're not stupid. You don't have a plan. We got a plan. Kevin Kim's going to be with us and stay in this church, but she's going to serve for the next month. But I want you to know, as your pastor, give her a high five for five years of service. When you see her, she's back there right now. When you see her, high five her and say, I can't wait to see what God five does years. in your new it's season. Awesome. But you know what? It's all about it. It's the same thing in each of our lives. Brad and I just came through a major season change in our own personal life. And it can be scary. But let me tell you, don't ever forget this. Fear is the opposite of faith. You cannot have fear and have faith. They cannot reside together. So either you're fearful 
or you're walking by faith. You're either scared or you're walking by faith. And listen to me. It doesn't have to be a big season, okay? A season can be, I surrender to Jesus Christ. He's now my Lord and Savior. This is scary. I'm going to embark on a new season, something different. It could be you're addicted to something that you know good and well is going to destroy your body. And you're saying, I know that I need to quit. I know that I need to stop doing this bad habit. It's a new season. Drop the bad habit. Do a new season. A season can be anything. It can be you've got a bad marriage and you feel like it's time for me to get out. Are you sure? Have you asked God? Because listen to me. It could be that you are embarking on a new season and you need to change something within yourself. Today I want you to look inward. We want you to stop and we want you to say, God, is this the season? Is there something I need to change? Is there a new season you have in my life? Maybe things are awesome right now, but I guarantee you there will come a day soon where you'll embark on a new season. That's right. Just because you know your season um, isn't perfect, that's all right as long as you remain in the purpose. Because, hey, I, I love... You know, uh, we talk about blooming where we're planted. You know, flowers in a field are beautiful in the spring. They're beautiful. And I love spring for that. It's because it's cool outside. But there's a freshness. You know, there's green grass. And there's, there's these beautiful flowers and all these things that are blooming. And it's beautiful. So I love that season. But at the same time, there are times in that season where I have to run for cover and protect my family from a tornado that is tearing across our land, right? So don't think that just because, uh, just because you're, you might be in a season that you're enjoying that you're not going to have challenges and you're not going to have trials. You're, you're going to have junk that's going to happen. But guess what? That's God just allowing life to happen so that you can be groomed for greatness. But it's all about how you respond in those circumstances. Are you going to act in faith or are you going to react in fear? Right? Are you going to freak out and be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Do you hear all those eyes in there? That's because you're trying to be in control. Stop trying to be in control. You're not in control. You've got to let go and let God, we walk by faith and not by sight, right? We don't operate by the way, by the, the way we see things being played out in our lives, right? We lean on God and on His wisdom and His wisdom alone to know that He is going to carry us through it all. He's faithful. He's faithful. Some of you guys might go, be going through a season right now. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it, it doesn't matter. All that matters is your purpose, right? All that matters is your purpose. So I'll encourage you guys today. How many of you guys would, would say, um, I needed this message? Did you raise your hand? Amen. I did too. Would you stand up with me today? I want to pray with you. And, you know, I want to remind you, man, uh, prayer is so powerful. And agreement in prayer is powerful. And the Bible says, when any two or three gather together, agreeing upon any one thing, and that is praying within the dimension or the realm of God's will, God's like, oh, I'm all about that. I'm going to bless that, right? I want to tell you, remaining in your purpose and enjoying the season that you're in and just being thankful for where you're at, just saying, God, just, you know, just use it and let me be obedient and, and don't let me freak out, but let me lean on you and everything. God is all about that. And so my prayer today is, is that we would do that very thing. That we would just put our trust in Him today and thank Him for the season we're in and run with confidence into the season that is to come. Remember, we're just assignments, right? Sent by God. The question is, are you going to pass or are you going to fail? I know that you're going to pass. Let me pray for you right now. Father, God, we are so grateful for your love. So grateful, God, for your presence in our lives. You're so faithful. You're so loyal, God, to your children. And for that, we say thanks. God, we ask today that you would help us 
to embrace the season we're in and embrace the season that is to begin. Let us put our faith and our trust in you. Let us realize that we are not our own. Let us realize, God, that we are sent on assignment by you. Let us be dedicated, determined, and disciplined to walk that out, God, each step of the way. That we would please you in everything we say, do, and think. God, bless the season we're in. Bless the season that is to be here. Your head's still bad and your eyes closed. I just want to ask you, do you need a season change in your life today? Do you have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus? If you don't, it's time for a change. It's time to surrender to Him. It's time to give Him control because He created you. He has a purpose and a destiny for your life, but you will never embrace that. You will never embark upon that if you don't first surrender to Him. He can see what you cannot. If you're here today and you say, that's me, I, I've known God, I believe that God existed, but I can't say that I have a relationship with God. I want that. I want to hear from God. I want Him to speak to me. I want to make that decision today. I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you as a body of believers. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you out. But on the count of three, I'm going to ask that you just raise your hand just as a sign that your pastors would know and God would know who you are so we can pray for you. If that's you, on the count of three, will you just raise your hand and say, I want life change. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. On the count of three, one, two, three. Who are you? Amen. I see your hand. Amen. Amen. The best decision I ever made. Amen. The best decision I ever made was surrendering to Jesus Christ. I can't imagine where my life would be without Him. Church, will you pray together with me? Father God, and ask this morning that you would come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a brand new season. I want to have a relationship with you. I want my life to change. I want my life to change. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.